Hello everyone, I am Dan Stapleton. I'm here with Paul Kildiff Taylor uh, from Mode 7. This is Frozen Synapse 2, which I'm very excited to see. Uh, and yeah, we're going to see a bunch of new stuff, including this big procedurally generated city, which uh, uh, looks real pretty. Yes, indeed. Hello, Dan. It is wonderful to be here. It's wonderful to be showing you a game uh, far too early. This is a, a <laughs> super superbly early version of this build um, things may go wrong crashing may happen but thanks to the beauty of recording I think some of that might be edited out so uh, magic yes so good it's just to, to let people know where we're at with this one of the things we want to do um, with frozen synapse 2 is kind of do a bit more open development and sort of talk about where we're at with our concepts kind of earlier on so uh, people can get a better idea of what we're doing so uh, what I'm showing here is the procedurally generated city um, so eventually in the game you will be able to generate kind of as many of these cities as you want and one of the cool things about this city is that every single building has a function uh, and it's also owned by different factions so kind of looking at these outskirts over here there's a lot of residential buildings that's a temple there which is owned by the uh, the religious faction blue sunlight that people may remember from frozen sunups one if they've played that they come back in this game but that's, just to be clear like yep. all, all of this th this is there's there's no parallel to this in, in frozen synapse one at all no not this at is, all this is completely new and for those of you who don't know what frozen synapse is uh it, it uh, until now it hasn't been anything like this it's been it's been all exclusively a, a, a simultaneous turn-based tactical game uh, which we'll see some of that gameplay in a little bit, I hope. That's right, but, yes. So, but this uh, is a, a new strategy layer on top of that. The, the the same tactical gameplay is there that kind of underpins everything. And, and as I'm going to show a bit later on, we have made some changes and sort of evolved that a little bit. But yeah, so we, we, we wanted to do a game set in a fully procedurally generated city. We think we're the only procedurally generated city in a game where you can go into any building. Really? Um, and if, yeah, if anyone out there would like to correct me on that, <laughs> I, I've been issuing that challenge and I haven't been Bring corrected yet. So please do. Uh, then I'll start saying that in interviews. And you um, probably want to play that game too. <laughs> right, exactly, definitely. Um, yeah, so like I said, the, the tactical layer is still underneath there, so every single one of these different levels um, will have that gameplay in from Frozen Synapse 1. Um, That's as, a yep. lot of different battles there. Yep. Which, which to me is exciting because I played well over 200 games of, of that online. Nice. And I had, a, I had at least a 50% win ratio. I was, I, was doing, I was doing okay. I think, it was, I think it was actually better than that. It was like 60, 70. Anyway. Enough bragging. Go on. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, yeah, so I wanted to just show a little bit about the city sort of first before we kind of go down to the tactical By level. Not least because I have to restart the game every time <laughs> I do anything at the moment, but there we go. Um, right, so one of the most important things in this game uh, are the factions. And there's a lot of placeholder art and stuff here you may recognize from previous games, so just ignore that for now. <laughs> um, but what happens basically, the, the, the sort of narrative behind the game is a bit similar to XCOM Apocalypse, uh, kind of uh, a classic uh, strategic model monolith in its own right. But you are basically charged with investigating a series of incursions into the city by an invading force. Um, so that's kind of your role in the game as the player. But then also within the city there are a huge variety of these different factions. So we've got the Blue Sunlight religious faction that I mentioned before. Um, we're going to have the, the banking faction. Um, there's going to be all kinds of different roles. The police as, as well are uh, a faction. Um, and also there's going to be minor factions. So here we've got one. This name may not make it into the game. Parcel top. <laughs> they're, they're a logistics company. They ship a lot of stuff around the city, so they're not the kind of thing that you want to annoy. Maybe the future Amazon. I yeah, don't, don't, know. don't piss off Amazon. Exactly. But so, uh, so what, what does what does keeping these factions happy or mad do for me? Right. Um, so one of the things that you can do is you can take contracts from the different factions. So here we've yeah. got one from from Parcel Tossers uh, that I mentioned. They'll uh, give you contracts to deliver stuff, but there'll be things like one faction will annoy another one. And again, this is all completely dynamic. You know, think Alpha Centauri, that kind of thing. It's not sort of pre-scripted missions. So if you want to ally with a faction, you might like their ideology. They'll all have different philosophies, different approaches to how they deal with this incursion force. So you might find one that you agree with, you ally with them, you'll share money, maybe they'll give you some units and so on. And they'll also give you um, kind of access to use parts of the city that, that they control. So the important thing with um, the incursions is that they'll happen in different areas of the city and you'll have to rush around trying to get there. So you really want to keep the, the, the sort of balance of politics kind of nice so that you can progress through the city and and, you know, get to the things you want to get to. Without having to fight your way there. Exactly, right. exactly. Um, right. So I think uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to show you one of the, uh, the procedurally generated levels. Um, so the generator at the moment is generally happy most of the time, but it can go wrong. But let's just have a look at this building here. So this is just a corporate office building. Um, and I'm just going to interact with that right now and 
do a quick test mission. All right, so what we're having a look at here is one of the larger levels in the game. Um, we're going to call this a hero building. So each faction will have a variety of, of these buildings. Now, some of this is handmade content and some of it will be generated. So things like this, quite recognizable stuff, will probably be handcrafted, but then you'll have sort of additional stuff around the edges that is generated. And this is just to give us a variety of different stuff that we can do in the game. If you go purely procedural, you don't necessarily get to have some of that more recognizable more distinctive stuff so we want to we want to combine both um, in the levels and so it's like it's like graphically like, like you've got a lot more kind of detail than you did in the last one like those those cars are clearly cars right <laughs> <Whereas> you never, <laughs> yeah you never had anything like that it was always a little bit more abstract this is something we're playing with at the moment as you can see we've only got one uh, one car in the game right now but um, this was in our artist Richard Whitelock did the concept and we had the car and we just loved it so much it's so nice to have as you say a recognizable thing in there um, we've also got trees so we can do sort of outdoor areas um, parks and, and things like that yeah, it all gives a, a much nicer sense of scale right right exactly um so yeah this is and also of course i've got to point out the uh, the latest in uh, game technology curved walls uh, which we didn't have before so this is a real curve so it will interact with things like grenades and stuff kind of it, it's not just like a, a series of curved wall parts in blocks it's a real curve nice. um so, so there you go games should have real curves um right so i'm just gonna real games have curves that's ball. that's that's the way that <laughs> sentence works and 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 by extension the joke yeah um so within these levels once you've uh, kind of organized to go on a mission to a particular building there can be interesting stuff so you can define what you want to do maybe you want to take a character hostage or maybe you want to rescue a hostage depending on what your mission is but in the levels here you can see some lovely placeholder text here this is a bank so there's some money stored down here in this kind of vault area um and one of the new things about um this one over Frozen Synapse 1 is that we have sort of a lot more intricate AI stuff happening. Now, let me just try and commit a quick turn here. Um, and this will take a little bit of a while, but we'll see how the um, the enemies kind of respond to you. Uh, we wanted to create something that was a lot more like kind of um, doing a real mission inside a building. So we have patrolling enemies. Um, we have some stealth gameplay and stuff like that. So um, you injected a little more Hitman into it. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, taking some influence for some different things. So as I move down here, um, you can see that we've got these enemies all here patrolling around on their different routes. Um, and I don't know if I'll get the chance to show this during this demo, but what will happen is if I get spotted at some point, then certain enemies will go and revert to their defensive positions. So they'll take up some defensive positions around here. And also these guys down here, they'll probably move over and try and sort of block off the entrances to the vault. Um, and that's also something that we can do partially generatively um, with some of these levels we're actually working on something now that will define patrol routes and so on generatively um, so that you'll be able to kind of do this in 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 any level but that's that's really challenging uh, to get that right so tell me about the the team you're, you're bringing on this mission uh, right so we have just the basic kind of three machine gunners team right now and that's kind of the the sort of starting off team that you'll be able to have um, but eventually there will be a whole bunch of different units um, there's a smoke grenade unit which ho hopefully I'll be able to show you um, a little bit later on we've talked about doing melee units and things like that so the squad that you bring on this mission will be the squad that you send out from your base on the map and they'll make progress along the map they can encounter other squads along the way and so on um, so I'll just kind of I'll keep um, committing turns while I'm talking one of the things that's been really interesting um, to get right is sort of the sneaking around stuff and that's one of the sort of things that we're trying to balance here um, is really try and figure out you know when is it interesting to be doing the sneaking gameplay and when is it interesting to kind of go back into the traditional frozen synapse situation yeah his stealth and, and tactics i mean it's so hot right now you've got <laughs> right. but, but uh, it's it's difficult to do in an interesting way i mean if you got you look at at invisible ink and xcom 2 they both got very different approaches to it uh, but this one it uh, looks like uh Looks like you may be going a lot, lot more into that than XCOM does. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it, it's it's just something that's... When you start on a new gameplay mechanic, you're never sure if it's going to work. And this was something that in testing, um, we really just... As soon as we put in this gameplay, uh, it started to be kind of really exciting and, and really just feel like added this huge different layer of tension to uh, to the game. But as you can see here, one of the things to get right is just sort of, you know, the number of units that are around at the start of a level and the number of units that are kind of on defensive positions. And that's a lot of balancing stuff that we're going to have to to take really seriously with the generators and make sure that that all kind of plays out nicely. So what's your approach to, uh, to giving uh, the player information about... Uh, 
about like what the enemy is going to do? That's a really good question. It's something that we've been working on. Um, there should be a system in there that will give you some limited information about how well defended a building is. Maybe it'll just show you, you know, a subsection of the units or kind of give you a rough number of, of units that are in the building and so on when, you, when you're kind of on the map level. Um, so we don't want people to kind of necessarily know exactly what the defenses are. So you have to maybe make a bit of a gamble um, depending on kind of which type of building you're you're engaging there. But as um, far as what, what the what the enemies are going to do on a given turn, is there any indication like this guy's going to make a right? He's going to walk down here and make a right, or am I guessing about how, what he's going to do? Oh, I see. Well, you can watch. I mean, one of the things that you can do is kind of hide out and watch the patrol route. So as we haven't been spotted here yet, um, you can see in these previous turns kind of where the patrol routes are going. And generally, you know, there'll be sort of stuff like there's a guy down here who does his perimeter patrol. So you might sort of choose to kind of come down here at a different angle and so on. So you can use the, the, um, the testing and and also kind of committing turns while your guys are hiding out to sort of predict a bit of the, the route spotting, that kind of thing. And you've got no uh, no fog of war on the single player, huh? Um, we might do, again, something that we want to play with. In the original Frozen Synapse 1 campaign, we did have some some dark levels, as we, as we call them, that, that did have the fog of war. And they tended to be quite sort of distinctive um, design-wise. They weren't necessarily the best kind of bread and butter single player gameplay. Um, but it might be something that we do playing with limited information uh, with the stealth stuff is definitely something that we're that we're interested in doing. It looks like you've got some uh, some smarter pathing on uh, when you're when you're drawing the, the lines there because on the old one you would have to go uh, you would have to go around that corner you'd have to have. Uh, I think didn't, didn't it, we didn't know we ha we to... had um we definitely had navigation code and stuff in the first one that would enable you to just double click around okay. corners but um maybe didn't always work perfectly maybe maybe I um, have like early access or something like that yeah I think I think maybe some of that was off in in kind of the beta version um but yeah here yeah, so I've just made a sort of a, a little bit of an incursion into this level I mean it'll take quite a while to play through some of this stuff so um what I'm going to do now is is just go back to the map and and talk about some of that again yeah could could you go through one of these levels uh, completely stealth and not be detected? Yeah, totally. Yeah, awesome. yeah, that would totally be possible. Um, I think generally it's going to be quite hard to do that because... That's okay by me. We, <laughs> we want to get into combat. But yeah, one of the things that's really important is that people can really mess around with the game and, and play it the way they want to. If you want to take a sort of really laboriously slow approach to kind of picking through every room in a level and collecting everything, then you can definitely do that. We want to... We definitely want to facilitate well, that. Before we leave, though, we should sure. get you detected and shoot somebody just to, get, just to give... Just to give people what they want. All right, let's. Uh, people let's, want blood, Paul. Let's see if we can uh, if we can get that to happen. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, let's see if we can. I have a feeling that guy may uh, may walk out of the way, but we'll have a look. <laughs> so hard to get it to happen when you want it. To. Exactly. Exactly. Well, like hopefully. Over here. Hopefully we'll be able to see another level um, where we'll get more engagements kind of straight off the bat. One of the things is that we're definitely going to switch up the gameplay a lot with the the different buildings and levels that you go into so some of them will be kind of what we described as a, a situation in frozen synapse one where uh oh yes oh, we're gonna we get go. we're gonna get some combat nice. my uh my plan running out there was not uh not ideal i think i got uh you got somebody i got uh yeah i got that guy shot in the front and then we kind of engaged down there now I don't know if there's enough time in that turn to see the change in behavior. Yeah, you can see some guys turning around here. They've taken up their positions there, like I said. Right. Um, and then perhaps down here also, we might get a bit of a of a behavioral switch when I get... Yes, you can see that guy there running straight across there and him running up there. So that'll, that'll really affect kind of, you know... So the idea would be, would be to get your guys in position to ambush them as they run back into position. Yeah, totally. Also, um, one of the things that we've done is to stop camping and, and sort of just kind of make the game a bit more exciting. There will be uh, guys who run in and attack your team directly on, on almost every level. And the balance between the number of people on defense and the number of guys running in will be different based on the factions. So right. some might have just, just kind of go crazy and go all out and attack you as soon as you're spotted. And some might be a bit more strategic about it and sort of set back there. But um, but yeah, there we go. That's a, that's a kind of a decent look at that uh, gameplay in that particular level. So... Okay, right. Now we're into a generated level. So from the map, that was a kind of square uh, building surrounded by other buildings, and there's a little bit of a little bit of a kind of urban parkland there, I guess, with some fencing around it, um, and also cars on the road. Uh, it's taken the exact shape of the road from the map. So um, 
I mean, this needs a bit of refinement, but it's pretty exciting to me that that you can do this. You know, you can really have that that zoom down from the top level right here. So let me um, just show this. This is your vehicle. Um, again, probably won't look like this in the <laughs> finished version, but I'm kind of I, I'm now partial to this. It's been hanging around the Alpha for a while. It's not quite um, as fancy as those other cars. <laughs> no, indeed not. It's the frozen synapse mobile, uh, and the idea is that this would be some kind of cool attack van that has deployable cover because right. we want you to be able to kind of actually get into these buildings. Now, as you can see, the <laughs> I don't, this type of building uh, it seems to be rather heavily defended at least in this version, so I don't think we're going to really make it out very far. Um, yeah, one of the things that will be really interesting with this game is is balancing, because of course you don't want to be able to march right into uh, the most sort of heavily defended fortress of a faction immediately. Um, but I, I doubt very much <laughs> that it will look exactly like this, as this is somewhat ridiculous, but we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can get their attention by popping out of our vehicle there. Your your on screen UI is pretty pretty minimal. I, I guess you're relying on on key commands for the most part for crouching and and uh, and uh, other, um, other minute commands. Well, we have the same orders menu uh, that we did in Frozen Synapse. The right. Uh, the right click. Um, so let's just have a look there. That was a smoke grenade going off. Um, not quite sure about the decision to throw it there. But right, so you can see that radius of smoke there. That's actually now blocked this effectively. Okay. So if I had managed to successfully get out of there, um, I should use the mouse because pointing with my finger is a completely <laughs> useless thing to do on the internet. Look, th imagine this was my finger. Right, so if I'd managed to get out here, um, then I wouldn't now be able to shoot through this. So these units are kind of protected by that smoke. Um, and this kind of terrain changing stuff, you know, we had the rocket launchers in the original game which could blow up walls. This kind of terrain changing stuff is something people have asked for, for you know, for a long time. Um, um, and it's quite exciting. It does a lot to the gameplay. Again, uh, needs some work on that. But you do still have the rocket launchers, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. We've still got everything from Frozen Synapse 1 will be in there. Um, I'm pretty sure we'll have the, the shield and stuff from the red expansion in here by default as well. Not quite sure on that yet, but um, that should be interesting. Uh, yeah, so this uh, this kind of thing, we want you to just have this experience of kind of going up to these unusual buildings and sort of not really knowing exactly what's going to confront you when you get there. Also, if a different faction squad arrives at the same time as you, you'll be able to fight kind of within the terrain. So a lot will depend on kind of when people are sending stuff out and so on. Um, yeah. Just so you could have three factions on the same map? Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you got mowed down. I didn't do very well there, but um, <laughs> <laughs> I think the odds were, uh, were stacked against me. Right, so I just want to talk a little bit about um, how you can do various things on the map. So let's have a look at one of the factions I mentioned earlier, which is the banking faction. Um, so what we could do here is, let's say we were running a bit low on money, um, we could call up the faction leader. Again, this is all placeholder stuff, so kind of back to the old Alpha Centauri stuff. I'm not going to show this text too much because it's pretty terrible. Uh, yeah. So what I've done there is basically kind of agreed to have a uh, make a treaty with them, you know, a kind of non-aggression pact. Um, but in and fact, you got a home loan, <laughs> right? That's generally how it works with yeah. banks. Like yeah. you agree to not attack them with uh, assault rifles. <laughs> they uh, give you money, which is uh, which is nice. Um, so I'll just have a look now at uh, what the banking faction has. Uh, it seems that they have two banks in this city. Um, so I'm just gonna zoom over there to one of them. Um, that's one that we saw before. So, in fact, what I'm going to do is um, just quickly go back through that, and right, we'll uh, we'll have a look at this one. Um, yeah, so they they'll have uh, different banks around the city in different places that you can go to, and what you'll be able to do um, is I'm just going to select a different building for this. You'll be able to send your squad over to um, to various different places. So I'm just going to pick um, a particular squad there. Uh, and just get rid of that for now. So do um, I have one squad or multiple squads? You can have multiple squads, nice. yep, and you, you'll be able to divide up your units between them. Now what I should have done there is just sent that squad off, so let's see if we can find them. There we go, there's the squad on the map. Okay. Um, so they'll be moving around again. Oh, very clunky, um, and that disappeared very quickly. But eventually you'll be able to see all the squads from different factions smoothly moving around the map, so you can intercept people on the way somewhere, you can follow you know, follow your own squads. Um, that does feel very XCOM Apocalypse. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't have the randomly exploding cars, which was <laughs> one of my favorite features of that game. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot to, to break down in this game. You can see this uh, this log here of various various different faction interactions. Um, we're looking into ways that you can maybe kind of intercept faction communications, so you can see them making treaties with each other and so on. It's a bit more interesting than just this, this text list. Um, yeah, you've got some economy management there. You have to look at your, uh, your squad's salaries over time and things like that. Um, 
and yes, you'll be able to define all your own operations to go to different places and maybe kidnap some VIPs and steal some money and so, so on. So th this is not a light throwaway game, <laughs> is what you're saying. This, this right. is a pretty built-out uh, yeah. strategy management game. That's the idea. We're, we're, we looked at kind of grand strategy games, stuff like Crusader Kings, um, and just how cool it is to be able to interact with this really complex world. And we really feel that because we know what the core gameplay is in Frozen Synapse, we have that underpinning the city. Um, you can see right now, I mean, this is a very, very early demo, as I've said many times, but you definitely, even from this, can get an idea of exactly what it's going to be like. You know, you'll be making these these key decisions and then it will filter down to the, the kind of the macro combat level, uh, micro combat level between sort of two individual units on a map. And we just think that's really compelling. Um, and luckily other people seem to as well. We've had a nice, yeah. really would, nice response so I far. I would agree with that. Yeah. And you're, you're talking about uh, beta by the end of the year, hopefully? That's the plan. Awesome. Yeah, that's the plan. All right, so Paul and, and uh, from Mode 7 Games, we're... We are very much looking forward to seeing more of Frozen Synapse 2. So for much more on all this uh, uh, and a bunch more indie games we're going to be showcasing, uh, stick with IGN.